everyone, this is Kimmy Dore Cosplay, and I'm excited to be here to talk to you about a product, um, a specific one called Warbless Cobra Cast Art. And there's a couple things that I want to do with this video today. Um, so the video will be divided up into two parts. Uh, first part will be me introducing you to this product. Um, I will be talking about the few uses that I'm aware of um, that you know really make this product super useful. And then the second part will be me demonstrating at least one of those uses in the form of a tutorial. Um, the tutorial for this video is going to be posable rabbit ears. Um, I'm currently working on those uh, for a project of mine. It's Usagi Maru from the mobile game Omyoji. Um, but I realize there's a lot of bunny characters out there, so hopefully there's a lot of you who could possibly use this video. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and dive in here. Um, what is Warbla's Cobracast Art? The product comes in standard sheets, much like its other counterparts. Um, I think a lot of us are very accustomed to hearing about the original uh, Warbla. Uh, it's a very similar situation, except it's got some really unique properties that make it really different, actually. As w advertised on Warbla's website, uh, as well as on cosplaysupplies.com, um, this thermoplastic is actually a little bit or considerably thinner than uh, their original counterpart. Um, they describe it as being about the thickness of cardstock. And what makes it even more interesting is that there is a weave embedded into this material and so it makes it tear resistant. So that's the first and foremost uh, use that I'm aware of. Um, it's a really good product when it comes to forming um, and shaping things that are very organic. Uh, in their shape and also things that are highly detailed. One example that I can actually show you even is this Oni mask. I'm not going to go too depth into this use because um, that's not really what the tutorial I'm about to show you is about, but um, this Oni mask is something that I made for a previous project and this one was quite complex in the procedure that I made it for. Um, I had made a poly polymer clay, sculpt, and um, essentially had to make a silicone mold, and then I cast it with uh, freeform air epoxy dough, and so that's how I got this. When in hindsight, I actually thought, wow, actually this Cobra Cast might have been a really good product for me to use at that time. I'll show you a tiny little sample. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but this is the, this is the, or the final outcome, and then this is the forming that I did on top of it, uh, you can see that it actually picked up on quite a few details. And what makes it interesting is that rather than tearing at some parts, like original Warbla may have done, um, the mesh actually stretched in order to make sure that it covers those deep areas. And so I really love the tear resistant qualities of this product. In hindsight, I feel as though what what I could do uh, in the future if I were to come across the situation is take my sculpt and form it over it with the Cobra Cast and then fill the Cobra Cast in, a, in a instance uh, once it's picked up all the fine details and line it with something like the epoxy dough to give it structure because this by itself may be a little too flimsy for a mask like this but this partnered with a, a filling agent would actually make it a really good way to go about it. One thing I will note is that um, it also mentions this on the website, uh, this material does have like a, a fine texture because of the weave um, and it's not so bad but it definitely will require some sort of treatment either through um, gesso or flexibond or what have you. So in order to get that smooth surface there still will be some treatment needed. One thing I should note, um, one of the great things about a lot of the Warbler um, products are is that you can take leftovers and mush them together and essentially use it almost like clay right it's not always just a sheet type based product um, and I was a little bit concerned that when I first heard about uh, Cobra Cast that perhaps when you wouldn't be able to do that because of the weave um, maybe it won't be be very mashable but it turns out I was wrong and you can still um, very easily take leftover uh, Cobra Cast art and mash it together and still you know work with it in the clay form as a little example I took a strand of This product and curled it up mashed it up into a ball and it turned out very smooth um, 
and I was really impressed and I'm actually really excited that you're still able to do the same thing with this product. With that, now I want to talk about the second use that I'm aware of, and this is where I want to spend the bulk of my time in this video today. It is the fact that Clovercast is capable of acting as a, as a stabilizer for a wide range of things, um, whether it be accessories or if you're sewing a handbag, a corset. The reason why it, this material can do that, and which you know traditionally original Warbo may not have been able to. Um, it's the fact that it you can sew through it. It is thermal plastic that could be sewn through, which was in my mind just completely mind blowing. Um, it was I was really excited to hear about this characteristic, and so I had to take advantage of it and see how far I can go. I'm happy to report that it sews beautifully because of its tear resistant qualities. It's everything that I could have asked for. So animal years. Um, You'll see this very shortly in the tutorial that my process generally involves taking some sort of stabilizer um, and cutting it in the pattern necessary and then either covering it with some sort of fur. I've also done, used um, wig fibers to cover it so that the ears and the wig could match perfectly. You'll see as an example here with Atlanta's wig, um, I used, I coated the stabilizer with uh, the wig fibers directly. And what I've done, used in the past, were everything from felt, rigid felt, or craft foam, or um, polystyrene, what have you. And some things that I didn't like about those products were, rigid felt is great because you can sew through them, but um, sometimes it's not just a matter of sewing down a sheet of fur to it. Sometimes I really do get down and dirty with glue um, and a, just cover the whole thing with wig fibers. And when I need to use glue in that volume, um, the materials like felt will absorb it so quickly that it's hard to get the glue to sort of do its job. On the counter side, using some of the thicker plastics, um, you know, it's great because they're very firm and robust and structurally they'll never falter but um, sometimes they, they won't be very posable, like I'd be afraid of them cracking if I bend it too far, um, and naturally you can't sew through it, but you can um, you know, uh, use glue, which is you know, great, it's plastic, but the reason why I like being able to both sew and glue to some sort of stabilizer is because when I attach ears to wigs, I often sew them directly to the wig cap in order for them to stay. Um, that's how I've traditionally done them. It's going to be a little bit different for the rabbit ears I'm about to show you, but I love having that flexibility um, and I think uh, it's really valuable that Warble's Cobacast Art is capable of doing both. So I think that's about as much talking as I'm going to do here. Um, we're going to move right along to the tutorial portion of the video now. Um, hopefully you seeing it in action will help you sort of digest you know all the capabilities of this material. I do highly recommend it. It's really really been fun working with uh, Warbles Cobacast art and I really hope that you will give this a shot. So here we go, get your craft supplies ready, off to the sewing room. <laughs> Assuming your fur cloth is wrinkled, start by using a blow dryer to heat up the fibers. Just get it so that it's hot, but not enough to melt it. I prefer to work in one foot sections. Then, use a fine tooth comb to comb out the fibers. Make a paper pattern of your rabbit ear. This can be at the exact shape and size that you want the final ear to be. Cut four of these rabbit ears using the fur cloth. Make sure to add about half inch seam allowance when doing so. Once done, pull out any loose fibers around the edges of each ear. Moving on to Warbless Cobracast art, cut out two of the rabbit ears. These do not need the half-inch seam allowance.
Take the two fur outer sides of each ear and lay their corresponding cobra cast layers on top. What you'll be doing is taking the half inch seam allowance of the fur and folding it over the edge of the cobra cast. Then you'll be sewing as close as possible along the raw edge of the fur. Do your best to push the fur fibers outwards as you sew. To hide this new seam line, use a tool like an awl to try and untuck the fibers that got caught underneath the threads. This will help hide this line. For this next step, I'll be using 14 gauge wire. I'm using this thick wire because my ears happen to be very tall, but you might be able to use something a little more lightweight if depending on the height of your ears. Cut four pieces of wire at least six to eight inches longer than the ear itself. Next, carefully slide each piece of wire into the channel that is created by the folded edge of the fur and the new seam. Use two wires per ear and each wire should go all the way up to the tip. Take the two remaining pieces of fur cloth and cut off the half inch seam allowance. These will be for your inner ears. While there's lots of ways to color fur cloth, what I personally used was Jacquard's textile paints, this type of bristle brush, and some water. Once I got the shade of pink that I wanted, I mixed in just a little bit of water to thin out the paint. Then, using the bristle brush, I applied the paint in thin layers. I generally paint it in the same direction as the fur, but at times it helps also to brush the opposite direction to get the paint into some of the deeper crevices of the fur, depending on how long of a fur shag you're using. In the event that some of the paint starts to clump together, I also recommend using a fine tooth comb and combing out the fibers periodically. Once I got the pale pink generally all over, I mixed a slightly deeper pink and did just some thin strokes down the center of each ear. To assemble each ear, I used Fabri-Tac. Apply a stroke or two of Fabri-Tac down the center of the cobra cast side and press the inner ear on top. While I could glue down the outer edges of this inner layer as well, I find that the raw edge of the fur cloth is kind of visible from the outside. And so my preference was to fold it under about at least half an inch to hide it and let the fluffiness of the fur cloth actually hide that seam altogether. So essentially, fold then glue along the two long edges. Leave the tip last. As with some early steps, do your best to try and untuck some of the fur that got caught underneath. Next, fold each ear in half, and then using a pair of pliers, twist the wires together so that they don't come apart. You don't exactly have to keep the wires splayed apart the way I've done here, 
I mostly did that because I was using a very thick gauge wire and it helped keep the wires from unraveling themselves. So here's my base wig. You'll notice that I've parted the fibers so that it exposes the two points in the wig cap from which I want the ears to sprout. It's important to note that I recommend starting with an unstyled wig. I'm showing you first how the ears should look once installed. I'll show how I did this in the next few steps, but the gist of it is I've punctured the two wires for each ear through the wig mesh and folded them into figure eights. The figure eights essentially rest against the head and the wig is what holds it to your head. Again, the way I did it is a little cumbersome because I kept the wires splayed out, but as you see here, I am cutting a tiny tear in the mesh of the wig and I'm puncturing it through with the both wires of each ear first. Flip the wig inside out, then using your hands or a pair of pliers, bend the two prongs into a figure eight. To prevent the ends of each prong from stabbing into your head, I recommend taking the pliers and curling the ends into little loops. Once you've done this, I recommend putting the wig on and molding the figure eights against your head so that they fit your head properly. I'd also recommend attaching the figure eight wires to the wig mesh uh, with a couple stitches so that the ears can, won't rotate on you as you wear them. Once you've given your wig a test run, go crazy with the styling. are not going anywhere they're very robust but the best thing about it is that they're really light um, you know I think previously uh, had I used uh, probably polystyrene or original warbler um, that partnered with the really thick wires um, any use or any kind of weight on my head is really I'm really sensitive uh, up here so I am really comfortable at the moment uh, and as you saw earlier, it's really superposable, just on the fly. I'm able to sort of give him more personality. If I want to be sad, if I want to be happy, I can move them straight up. I can angle them, twist them. It's great. Uh, I really like having this sort of flexibility, especially when I do photo shoots, because they convey so much emotion. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love cosplaying animal characters so much, just because I think they have ways beyond you know using your face to sort of convey feelings and so Usagi Maru was just an easy choice for me just because how can you resist those ears right so um I had so much fun working on these thank you again I have to give a shout out to cosplaysupplies.com who were very generous in sponsoring me um, with the uh, Warbless Cobracast art for this project. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really enjoyed uh, working with this material and I hope you guys will give this um, material a shot too. Have fun and see you on the con floor.